it might be hard to imagine, but before midday on November 18th, 1883, time zones didn't exist. Each town had their own time. This was displayed on the town hall and was calculated by a sundial. You might have seen them around your local park, but in just one day, we went from thousands of time zones to just 24. So wouldn't the next logical step to be to take it one step further and unify the entire world under one global clock? It may sound crazy, but stay with me. Time zones as we know them today are super weird. When Greenwich Mean Time was first established, they created 24 other time zones known as meridians. These occur every 15 degrees of longitude either side of the GMT. Each of these meridians would account for one hour of daylight. However, countries are allowed to pick their own time zones, and this causes problems. Take China for example. It spans over five meridians but adheres to just one time zone, Beijing time which means the sun can rise in China's western states as late as 10.17 a.m. Head over to the international dateline and things get even more bizarre. In an ideal world, the international dateline would run along the 180th line of longitude. But again, because countries can choose their own time zones, it looks more like this. This causes all manner of bizarre occurrences, such as the line islands of Kiribati. These islands, despite running along the same longitude as Hawaii, run an entire calendar day behind them. Because of this particular time zone, three separate calendar days can occur on Earth at the same time. For example, when it's 10 a.m. on a Wednesday in London, it's 11.30 p.m. on Tuesday in the Pacific island of Niu, and it's 12.30 a.m. on Thursday in the Kiribati Islands. But that's not all. In one of the most bizarre cases of time zone mishaps, December 30th in 2011 didn't even exist in Samoa. In 2011, Samoa made the decision to move back to the west of the international dateline. This was to facilitate better trade with its two biggest economic partners, Australia and New Zealand. To do this, the entire country literally just skipped a day. However, American Samoa, which is a separate country, didn't make the switch, meaning that despite being only 70 kilometers apart, Samoa and American Samoa now share a 24 hour time difference. So if time zones are so complicated, maybe we should just get rid of them entirely. Could we really unify the world under one global clock? It would definitely make dealing with certain aspects of the globalized world easier. If you were to take a seven hour flight from Sydney to Singapore, when you arrived, it would simply be seven hours later, no having to adjust your watch. When Skyping with someone on the other side of the planet and you agree to talk at 10 o'clock, there would be no confusion as to who's 10 o'clock. It's not even that wild an idea. Observatories all over the world currently coordinate using GMT, or, as it's known today, universal time. It doesn't mean that half the planet would have to wake up in the middle of the night or go to sleep in the day, you'd simply have to just shift your perception of what a normal time is. For example, a normal time to wake up might be 7am in London, but in Brisbane it might be 2pm. A normal time to have lunch in Paris might be 1pm and 10pm in Tokyo. Working Despite Dolly Parton's smash hit 9 to 5 no longer being relevant for the majority of the planet, it seems like a global clock might just be the next logical step in the inevitable globalization of the planet. <laughs>